Section One of Birds, Volume Two, Number Three, September eighteen ninety seven. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Avahi in July two thousand twenty. Bird Song. How songs are made is a mystery, which studied for years still baffles me. R. H. Stoddard. Some birds are poets and sing all summer, says Thoreau. They are the true singers. Any man can write verses in the love season. We are most interested in those birds that sing for the love of music and not of their mates, who mediate their strains and amuse themselves with singing, the birds whose strains are of deeper sentiment. Thoreau does not mention by name any of the poet birds to which he alludes, but we think our selections for the present month include some of them. The most beautiful specimen of all, which is as rich in color and sun sparkle as the most polished gem to which he owes his name, the ruby throated hummingbird, cannot sing at all, uttering only a shrill, mouse like squeak. The humming sound made by his wings is far more agreeable than his voice for when the mild gold stars flower out it announces his presence then a dim shape quivers about some sweet rich heart of a rose he hovers over all the flowers that possess the peculiar sweetness that he loves the blossoms of the honeysuckle the red the white and the yellow roses and the morning glory the red clover is as sweet to him as to the honey-bee and a pair of them may often be seen hovering over the blossoms for a moment and then disappearing with the quickness of a flash of light soon to return to the same spot and repeat the performance squeak squeak is probably their call note something of the poet is the yellow warbler though his song is not quite as long as an epic he repeats it a little too often perhaps but there is such a pervading cheerfulness about it that we will not quarrel with the author sweet 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 sweeter sweeter is his frequent contribution to the volume of nature and all the while he is darting about the trees carrying sun glints on his back wherever he goes his song is appropriate to every season but it is in the spring when we hear it first that it is doubly welcome to the ear the grateful heart asks with poor dylan what tidings hath the warbler heard that bids him leave the lands of summer for woods and fields where april yields bleak welcome to the blithe new comer the morning dove may be called the poet of melancholy for its song is to us without one element of cheerfulness hopeless despair is in every note and as the bird undoubtedly does have cheerful moods as indicated by its actions its song must be appreciated only by its mate coo coo suddenly thrown upon the air and resounding near and far is something hardly to be extolled we should think and yet the beautiful and graceful dove possesses so many pretty ways that every one is attracted to it and the tender affection of the mated pair is so manifest and their constancy so conspicuous that the name has become a symbol of domestic concord the cuckoo must utter his nose in order to be recognized for few that are learned in bird lore can discriminate him save from his notes he proclaims himself by calling forth his own name so that it is impossible to make a mistake about him well his note is an agreeable one and has made him famous as he loses his song in the summer months he is inclined to make good use of it when he finds it again english boys are so skilful in imitating the cuckoo's song which they do to an exasperating extent that the bird himself may often wish for that of the nightingale which is inimitable but the cuckoo's song monotonous as it is is decidedly to be preferred to that of the female house wren with its chit 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 when suspicious or in anger the male however is a real poet let us say and sings a merry roulade sudden abruptly ended and frequently repeated he sings apparently for the love of music 
and is as merry and gay when his mate is absent as when she is at his side proving that his singing is not solely for her benefit so good an authority as dr coes vouches for the exquisite vocalization of the ruby-crowned kinglet have you ever heard a wire vibrating such is the call note of the ruby thin and metallic but his song has a fullness a variety and a melody which being often heard in the spring migration make this feathered beauty additionally attractive many of the fine songsters are not brilliantly attired but this fellow has a combination of attractions to commend him as worthy of the bird student's careful attention of the hermit thrush whose song is celebrated we will say only read everything you can find about him he will not be discovered easily for even olive thorn miller who is presumed to know all about birds tells of her pursuit of the hermit in northern new york where it was said to be abundant and finding when she looked for him that he had always been there and was gone but one day in august she saw the bird and heard the song and exclaimed this only was lacking this crowns my summer the song sparrow can sing too and the phoebe beloved of man and the white-breasted nuthatch a little they do not require the long seeking of the hermit thrush whose very name implies that he prefers to flock by himself but can be seen in our parks throughout the season but the sparrow loves the companionship of man and has often been a solace to him it is stated by the biographer of kant the great metaphysician that at the age of eighty he had become indifferent to much that was passing around him in which he had formerly taken great interest the flowers showed their beauteous hues to him in vain his weary vision gave little heed to their loveliness their perfume came unheeded to the scents which before had inhaled it with eagerness the coming on of spring which he had been accustomed to hail with delight now gave him no joy save that it brought back a little sparrow which came annually and made its home in a tree that stood by his window year after year as one generation went the way of all the earth another would return to its birthplace to reward the tender care of their benefactor by singing to him their pleasant songs and he longed for their return in the spring with an eagerness and intensity of expectation how many provisions nature has for keeping us simple-hearted and childlike the song sparrow is one of them c c marble end of section one